In China, you have two major groups. Uh, the biggest one are Chinese Muslims, and they're called actually Wei. They're called Wei Hui. Okay, um, and so the Wei Hui or the Wei, they're the Chinese Muslims. And they're everywhere in China. They're everywhere. And they will always speak the local Chinese language, and they cultivate architecture and calligraphy and so forth. And then you have the Uyghurs. The Uyghurs are not Chinese, they are Turks. Okay, they're, 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 they're Turks. And they live in the northwest, which is called Xinjiang. Big, huge part of China. You'll also find them throughout China, running restaurants and things like that. The Uyghurs today are really in trouble. Really in trouble. And the Chinese government is coming down on them really, really unforgiving. Um, there's reasons for this. Um, one of them is that there were secessionist extremist groups among the Uyghurs. I was in Jeddah. I taught there for 16 years. It happened that my best department head was a Uyghur. He was a Uyghur from Mecca. They had come to Mecca in the 1930s or 1940s. But he still spoke Uyghur. He spoke perfect Arabic as well. And I, I liked him. He was my best friend. And so these Uyghurs came to see us. They were young Uyghur extremists. And he, he wanted me to come, so I did. And we talked to them. And we told them, you don't rebel against the Chinese state. Do you realize what you're going to do? You'll bring death and destruction upon your heads, and that's not permissible in Islamic law. Don't call it jihad. You are not able to do jihad against the Chinese. They will crush you. Okay, this is the laws of jihad. You have no right to do it. First of all, you don't represent anything. You're not a state. Of course, they knew that we're just sellouts, right? And then they go back and they begin to blow things up, and they do other things, so this brings hell down upon them. Now, I'm not going to say that that justifies what has happened, and I'm not going to say that that continued, because there's also a lot of prejudice. And in China, you know, this is something, again, like, where is our political representation? And we have some great countries in the Muslim world who, if they would just come together, Egypt, Turkey, Pakistan, if, if, we, if we get their houses in order, and if they were allied with each other as they ought to be, Egypt should never be alienated from Turkey. Turkey needs Egypt. Whether you like what's happened there or not, you need them politically. So if you had these three countries, Egypt, Turkey, and Pakistan working together, they could pull us out of the mud. They could. Uh, and I'm not trying to denigrate any Muslim country, okay? So please, if you're from other countries, don't feel that I think little of your country. But I'm just talking about geopolitically. These countries are extremely strategic. And of course, Pakistan does have a really good relationship with Turkey. They always have. You know, but we've got to have some kind of political force in the Muslim world. And these are really intelligent people, and they could do that, in my opinion. And, you know, of course, what are we able to do about it? And that's just ideas. But somebody's got to stand up for us. And the Chinese are always doing business with us. And the Chinese are doing a lot of business with Pakistan. Okay, so we should say, like, you know, like, we don't accept that you treat the Uyghurs this way. Right? And I hope and pray that someday we'll do that. Like, you know, that Pakistan has really good reasons for working with China. Because China's also a rival of India. And India is the big problem for Pakistan. And Indians do a lot of dirty politics, whether you know it or not, they do. They do. They dammed up the rivers of the uh, Himalayans that go into Punjab against international law. Does anybody take them to court? No, you can't, because Israel's there on their side. And they will and so they make the rivers in Punjab dry up. Go and look for yourself. And then when it's the rainy season, they open up the dams and flood the people. They do all kinds of things like that. Okay, so um, Allah enable us to find leaders in the Muslim world who will at least stand up for the Rohingya. You know, like, you can't do this. 
But we have no voice, do we? No voice whatsoever. And I hope and, I hope and pray that someday we will.